I think that's good enough. All right, how are you all doing? Hey, uh, Pinback Darius Ponder Pimp, good to see you all. Let's see who else is in the list I miss. CSE Horn, uh, Durgrim, uh, Passive Wow, Play Doc Nama. Wow, we got some new people in today. Hey, folks. All right, audio and video, okay, thank you very much because I forgot to plug into the microphone until the last second, so I didn't know how that was going to go. All right, um, so last week we started dreaming up a um, little API for a 2D game engine. And so this week we're just going to start casually knocking that together. We'll get the basics up so we have little sprites and things going on and um, we'll get at least the uh, define actor macro that we designed last time. Uh, we'll get that in. And um, then, I don't know, it really depends how far we get. We've just kind of, we noodled around with some things here. Um, and then we had previously um, gone and hacked this on top of uh, Play With Verts, which is a project we've had like for numerous weeks and have been uh, been using as kind of the bootstrapping for a long time. But it's focused on 3D stuff, really, so we don't need any of that. So let's start fresh. And we're going to start that with a quick load, quick project. Um, we will call quick project make project and let's just make sure I'm in the right directory. So slime set default directory to code lisp, that'll be fine. Um, what we're going to call the pro project, don't know, uh, we were saying daft 2D engine, so let's just call it daft for now. Um, all right, so let's go to that, see what we've got here. Okay, so we've got a readme, which I want to be a markdown file. <laughs> Important things first. All right, we've got an ASD file. Uh, we'll fill out the details later, but we're going to set what it depends on first, because we've got a bunch of dependencies. Um, we're going to need Keppel, and we're going to use um, the SDL2 host for Keppel. Um, so that's going to create a context and all that kind of stuff, whereas Keppel just abstracts GL, so it doesn't know how to do that on its own. Um, we will need um, Vario, but um, Keppel is going to pull that in. We need RTG math. Uh, we need, which is the real time uh, graphics math stuff. We need, uh, well, we'll bring in Nineveh because that has a load of handy functions we might end up needing. Uh, we're going to pull in Dirt, which does image loading. And we're soon going to be loading in sprites and stuff like this. And what else? Probably Skitter for input. And there are specific packages that integrate that with Keppel and all that kind of stuff. So let's look at skitter, keppel.skitter.sdl2 is the one we want. So let's pull in that stuff. Do that. Then we'll quick load daft and that should already be uh, able to load. That loaded way too fast. Oh yeah, I didn't save the AST. Loaded again, and now we should actually get churn through all our dependencies. Because Keppel itself and takes a little while to compile. Yeah, so how you all been? Good week? I have been... Ah, oh, just distracted this last week. I've been looking into SSE stuff. So it's about time I messed around with some lower level things, and uh, looking at how to add intrinsics in SBCL is actually really easy. I just want to do, I want to do some kind of data processing thing. I've got some ideas rolling around my head, but um, yeah, they're not fully formed yet, so I won't rant about them too much on here. Um, okay, so let's look at the package as well. So what symbols we're going to have available um, without extra qualifiers. So we'll load in Keppel, we're going to load in Vari, which is the shader language. We're going to load in, we're going to bring in RTG math. Uh, we're going to import everything from, what else? Yeah, let's get everything from uh, Nineveh in and yeah, everything from Dirt as well. So pretty much the same dependencies we've had, we'll just bring them all in. Uh, that's compiled now. Uh, if you see the flash, that's the compile and save it. And then we are good. Now, what I actually want to do before we go any further is I want to throw a few files in here that I always use. So I'm just going to go to the Keppel folder and steal from here. That's a strange sorting. Uh, the editor config, the git ignore, and the license. Now nah, we'll use a different license. We'll probably put this under GPL. 
Uh, but we'll copy these two into Daft. Good. I also want to set up a repo so you guys can get it. Um, new repository. Okay, that's all we need there. And let's say this. We're going to go back to here and load up Magit. Oh no, we haven't created a repository yet. We'll do that now. Yep, there it is. We will add a remote. How do we do that? Uh, is it M? Add remote name, origin, remote URL is there. Set it as default. Couldn't fetch origin. No. Hmm. Oh, I know why. I gotta tell it my uh, SSH stuff. Oh. Cool. Origin URL. Origin already exists. What? That is, uh, that's a little bit confusing. I have not had that problem before. Remove, let's remove origin and try again. So it's m add origin paste. There we go. And then we should get a little thing that comes up and tells us. Oh, I guess I have to do the first commit first. Let's just try that. Um, drop. And yeah, there we go. Origin master is missing. I hadn't realized that it doesn't tell you this stuff until your first commit. Cool. We'll just push this upstream and say that the upstream is origin master. And then we should be ready to start. And ah, my lovely Emacs key bindings for Firefox are gone. Nice. Okay. We can begin. Push, says Pornopim. Yes. Hey, Jace. Right. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just get a little main loop running. Get a... Um, a little square up on the screen, which is going to use a unit cube. Basically, I'm not sure if you remember from last week, one of the things I wanted to do was have all the units, the game units be defined by the pixels. So if you do a 20 by 20 uh, pixel uh, image for your sprite, it's going to be 20 by 20 units in the game. Um, and we're going to do measure, everything's going to be measured off that um, by default, unless you do extra scaling. So uh, we're going to make a unit cube. We're going to get that set up here um, we'll change it to a quad at some point when we can bothered and um, I mean I'm starting with um, cubes because sometimes it might be nice to put a 3d camera in and then see the layers um, yeah do that if I want to okay so let's let's get started where's my REPL um, we are in the right package I'm going to use a main loop um, macro from Nineveh because it does the things that I want um, I'll show you those in a second. I'm just going to say on start, we're going to call the init function, which we're going to put here. And then inside here, we're going to call um, step engine, which is very overdramatic, seeing as <laughs> how much code we've got here at the moment. Um, step engine, compile that, compile this. Okay, so I'm just going to expand this macro to show you some of the things it does. Uh, the main reason I like it is basically you call um, Daft as a function, uh, passing in either start or stop, and you can pass in an optional number of frames. And this lets you just say, hey, run this for 100 frames, run this for one frame, which happens a lot when uh, debugging stuff. Or you can just not specify that and it will run forever. Um, and we do that a lot of the time as well. Um, it wraps things in macros to make sure that... Um, if you get an error, you can just say continue and that's all fine. What else does it do? Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, it just ensures that Keppel's already initialized. So then if we go, um, did compile that I think? Yeah, if we do daft and then start, actually let's put print high in there. So this actually something to see. We do it 10 times, it's initialized. We've got high 10 times and then it stopped. That's cool. So. Let's get ourselves some visuals. So I'm just gonna do that quickly. So if we do def var, we're gonna have a cube stream. So this is a stream of vertices or a VAO if you're more used to um, normal GL stuff. 
and we're going to say unless uh, the cube stream is already like is non-nil, unless it's already been defined, then we're going to call a function called it's part of the Nineveh package um, dot mesh data primitives, and we're going to say cube GPU arrays. And if we look down the bottom um, in our mini buffer, we can see that it says its size is going to be one and it's going to have normals and text chords. This is the main bit I want. We're going to start with a unit cube. Um, all of our sprites are going to be the unit cube and then per sprite data is going to tell it how to scale it, what size and all that kind of stuff. So we don't need to call it with any arguments. This thing returns two GPU arrays. So we're going to, as a list. So we're going to destructure that list into vert array and index array. And then we're going to make a buffer stream using the vert array and the index array like this. Um, let's set the cube stream to be that. Cool. And now next time we init, that should be done. So if we look at cube stream now, it's nil. And if we just say run it once, we can look at cube stream and it's set up. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're gonna need something that's actually gonna draw something. So we're gonna need a couple of GPU functions. One of them to be our vertex stage and one of them to be our fragment stage. Again, stuff we've done lots of times before in these different streams, so we'll just blast it out. So we'll go, same, but we'll just call it cube. Cube VS for vertex uh, stage. The vert coming in is gonna be of type GPMT. This is a struct that works on the CPU and GPU. Um, has a position, a normal, and a texture coordinate. Uh, and these are the accessors. And they are VEC3, VEC3, VEC2, which will be important soon. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to take the um, position from the vertex and we're going to set the uh, W uh, component to be 1 because it's a vertex shader and your W, uh, all your X, Y, and Z components are going to be divided by the W. Um, and so we're going to divide by one. That's the in one of the fixed function stages between vertex and whatever next. Well, yeah, between vertex and fragment. Um, let's do our fragment shader. For now, it takes nothing. If you remember the primary return type from your um, vertex uh, stage is going to be taken away by GL. It's going to be used for the position of the vertex. And then all the other ones that are returned, because we have multiple return values, will be passed on to the next stage because we're only passing one there, um, and that's taken. No arguments are needed on the fragment stage for now. Um, and we're just gonna make it pink, the perfect testing pink and it's defund G. So we compile these two. We're gonna make a pipeline, uh, which is our GPU pipeline that's gonna compose these two functions together and give us something in GL that we can map over. Um, so this is gonna be called um, simple cube. And we are going to specify the two functions. So cube vs, um, and it, we have to give it the signature. Again, like GPU functions, as you'll have seen in GL, if you've done that kind of stuff, um, allows overloading. Hey, Borodust, how you doing? Hey man, um, I tested, um, okay, so Borodust has been doing some awesome work on wrapping up um, Chipmunk, which is a 2D physics library, which we're gonna use in a little while, um, and uh, nuclear and a variety of other things. He's been just killing it recently. Um, so what I wanted to say, Borodust, was I've tested uh, Chipmunk on the Mac as well, and it works great. Thank you very much. So hopefully that'll be in Quick Lisp soon. Oh, that'll be so good to play with, man. Um, okay, what were we doing? Yes. Cube VS. Yes, that's going to be our vertex shader. And this is going to be our fragment shader, which we don't have to specify any args. Again, because we're only specifying two stages here, we don't stri strictly need to name them, but if we wanted to, we can explicitly name them like this. Okay, that's compiled. Um, so what we're gonna do now is instead of uh, printing high, we're gonna clear the screen. We're going to map over a GPU pipeline. Our GPU pipeline is called Simple Cube. Our stream of vertices that we're mapping over this thing is CubeStream, and then we're gonna swap. 
and that should be it. So now if we just do start, we have a pink rectangly thing. And it's the wrong shape um, and a variety of other things. So let's start breaking this down. If we look at the viewport resolution, we're going to see something there. With no arguments, it's just going to get the current. Oh, no, it's not. I forget. Viewport resolution does take a viewport. Oh, I need my um, hints in the mini buffer. So if I just do slime enable concurrent hints, this is going to allow the hints to work while the main loop's running. Uh, viewport resolution, let's get the current viewport, the one that's bound in this scope. We can see it's 320 by 240, um, which is not the shape of this part of my screen, so of the window. So it's wrong. So we're just going to go and mess with that here. So res, uh, we're going to get the, um, what is it, the surface um, resolution of the current surface. Now, there's a bit of an API inconsistency, but current surface doesn't have um, a default argument. Um, so you have to specify the context. It really should default to the current context that you're in, but oh well. Um, like this, and then we're going to set f the viewport resolution of the current viewport to be res. If we do that now, we see that um, we've got our cube, even though it is a rectangle right now. This is due to the fact that the um, clip space coordinates basically go from 0 to 1 to minus 1 to 1 to minus 1 down here. So it's just being stretched because our aspect ratio is different. And if we resize this some more, we would see that. Um, so of course, we're going to have to handle the aspect ratio and all that kind of stuff. We will do that in just a minute. Um, Burrowdust is saying, yay, I've tested it on Windows today too. And it works um, in your environment, at least. Awesome. That's good. I mean, it's good enough to get it in a quick lisp. We can work from there. That's just sick, man. I'm, I'm really glad. Um, Oh, I want to. I want to play with Chipmunk. I think it's going to be badass. Okay. What is next? Well, um, one of the things, basically, I want. I want this. This. Um, okay. What am I trying to say? I would like us to be able to specify the height of the. Um, the screen in game units and this this is one unit high but the screen is two units high at the moment which is kind of weird so what I'm going to do is just multiply everything by two this is, so we get um, basically go from game units to GL units so we're treating this as if it's one by one um, we'll do that over here so let's mess with this a little so um, Game v3 is going to be the position. We'll do a star because I think we're going to be, be manipulating this quite a bit. Um, GLv3 is us converting into GL units. So in this case, it's just going to be multiplying it by 2. And then uh, down here, instead of using position, we're going to use GLv3. And I've done something wrong. What have I done? Oh yeah, um, GL names are reserved, so I can't do that. Um, well, GL hyphen is reserved anyway, so we could just do GLv3 like this. Eh. <laughs> All of these names are taken. Um, let's just do GV3 for now. Don't wanna have to worry about this. Okay, so I recompiled and everything disappeared. It is actually still there, but what's happened is now we've scaled the cube, it's, we're inside it, so we can't see it. Um, so all we're gonna do is, for now, is just move it back a bit. So if we just do uh, GV3, um, actually, we'll just do it on the same line. We go plus zero, zero, and we'll put it back minus 10, so. Right, there we go. And now, because, um, now we see we've got our one by our unit ah, our unit cube now fills the screen, so that's cool. And doesn't matter how far away because this is orthographic, 
um, it's not going to change the size. So if we do 100, it's still there. If we do 10, it's still there. But if we move it sideways, you know, we'll see it. Okay. Next thing to do, um, we're going to have to take care of um, zoom. Uh, so basically what I want us to be able to do is just specify the height of this in-game units and have everything else handled. Uh, so we're going to need to know the ratio between um, the height and the width so we can correct the aspect. And we're going to need to pass in the height that we want this to be. Okay. Let's add those as uniforms and then we can carry on. So, and uniform. Um, screen height. In-game units, that's going to be a bit much. Just do float. Okay, so, and then we're going to do um, screen ratio. It's also going to be a float. So compile those, and then down here we'll provide them. So this is going to be, uh, well, whatever size we actually decide. Let's make a variable for this. Let's do just a global for now. Def parameter. Um, screen height. Oops, in game units, and it's going to be 10. Let's take this massive name, come down here. Um, screen height is that. And then screen oops, ratio. Well, let's test this out over here. What we're going to do is we're going to divide this. So got these two numbers we're going to divide x of that by the y of that and we can see that the y is slightly high, is is actually greater than the x right now and so our result is 0.87 so the width is 87% uh, of the height there we go so we're going to basically do this except instead of saying star which is last thing that was computed on the REPL it's going to be res which we So we compile that. We're now getting them up these values up here. Um, so what we will do? What will we do? Um, well, the ratio stuff is easy, but we're not going to actually see any visual difference yet uh, because everything's pink, and it's actually going to make it slightly wider. Um, so it's just going to be off screen. So that's fine. Uh, screen height is going to be easy though. What should we do there? Um, we will just divide the size of everything um, by that amount to start with. So game v3 is going to be divided by game 3v3 screen height. Okay. So now we can see this is a bit of a rectangle still. So we're just going to correct that aspect ratio. Um, so this should be the same. And we're now going to stretch this. Um, it's actually technically this. Yeah, divided by screen ratio. Oh, did I do that wrong? Times by screen ratio. Yeah, that's the screen. Sorry for the sorry for the weird leaning. Large screen here, so if I'm looking at it from the side, it still looks squished. Okay, so that's I mean it's a bit janky, but um, yeah, it's fine. We should spin this out into its own function. Just do two game units or whatever. Um, oh no. If on G, uh, what is this? Um, Bert to GL, and then we'll just pass in. And what is it? Vec three? Yeah. And we'll just take all of this stuff. Now just take it all. And we just return 
this with its little cludge in it. Yeah, something like that. Oh, vert is undefined. Yes, it is. This is now just pops. You get rid of this warning, recompile. Screen height is undefined, that is true. So let's pass that in. Screen ratio is undefined, also true. You could read the code, Chris. No, just recompile until it works. Screen ration? No, ratio. Let's, uh, let's fix that up. Okay, that compiled. So this ugly ass mangling function here is something we'll clean up later. We don't have to worry about it right now. And so we do this. With GLB3, something like that. Get rid of this. And everything's still the same. The, the same? The same. Um, it's hard to tell if anything actually happens, seeing as it's exactly the same visually. So what we'll do is, if we're in any doubt, we can pull uh, the simple cube. And we're going to have a look here to see that Vert's game units to GL is here in our GLSL. So everything's fine. Next. Um, next. We want to be able to position this thing and move it around. We also need to get uh, actually an image on it as well, because that is, this is boring looking right now. Um, we'll do the positioning and then we'll probably make another file because this is starting to fill up this one. And I don't want to be jumping up and down the source too much while you're watching. We'll try and make it as watchable as possible. Uh, actually, we can just move this stuff out to its own file. We'll see. We will see. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Oh yeah, I said position, didn't I? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll have, because this is um, still in 3D space, because uh, clip space is 3D, um, we'll just pass in a transform, which is going to be a matrix 4. Let's go and define that up here, actually. Um, here we go. Transform, which is map 4. Pass it in here, and for now, it's just going to be do an M4 translation. Is zero zero zero, so nothing should happen. Compile that, and it freaks out. Transform. Not quite. Continue. Okay, and then we should be able to go here and say multiply this position with the transform matrix. Ah, yes. It's not going to like the fact it's a vec three. So, um, we need to change our functions. Right, so, um, let's mess around with this then. Transform this times transform, and then it's going to be game v4. Let's change this. We are going to make it a vector 4, and the last component's going to be 1, uh, because if it's 0, it's not going to be translated. Um, that's our v4. We're going, to be, we're going to multiply it by transform. That's going to give us the transformed version. We're going to pass the transformed version into our thing to units. It's going to freak out, because it does not take that. Um, so it now needs to be a VEC4, and we should go fix all this. So this is a VEC4, which means a lot of other stuff is wrong as well. Let's have a look. This will need to be, we're dividing by, we want to divide by one. Um, then this is going to be a V4, and the last component is going to be The last component is going to be 1. This matters because we're about to multiply it by 2, which is a bad idea. Um, so we want to multiply it by 2, 2, 2, 1. Again, there are cleaner ways of doing this, but this will work. Game v3 is undefined. Very true. This is now game v4. Um, can't add together these two, which is correct. 
Right, nice. We should be able to recompile this now. What? Oh yeah, there's nothing that just takes a vector 4 when we're doing this. It needs a uh, screen height and screen ratio as well. Um, let's get rid of this and compile it again. And yes, now we're getting an error because this is returning a vector 4. And so now we don't need to try and add an extra component onto it. Now we get no compile notes. Now I'll just do a pull G again to see that we're getting our updated stuff. Yeah, that looks fine. Cool. Now, what this does mean is I should be able to go down here and recompile this and move this guy around, which is ace. So if we do sign, um, let's make a function called now. Um, Defund now is the internal real time uh, divided by a thousand. And so that guy is now moving. And it, yeah, it's moving a total of one unit um, around the center. Cool. Pomna Bimp, thanks for the hint on ratio. Um, even though I didn't see that you had helped. Hey, Love Like Syntax, good to see you, man. Okay. So we've got the stupid basics done. Um, we're also going to need this to be able to handle. Um, what am I thinking of? My, my head's a bit gone today, I'll tell you that. Um, what are we going to look for? We're going to look for free game sprites. We just need something simple. Top free game assets. Oh my god. Right, okay. Um, actually, the problem is these are all going to be lovely and... Uh, Proper sprite sheets and stuff, aren't they? It's really, I just need a little shitty, um, like, spaceship or something like that to shove on there. You know what? Let's uh, let's be lazy. Uh, around back in uh, play with verts, we probably got a texture knocking around here. Really, none. I'm not using that. Where's um? Gotta be something here. Episode 20, let's just do 19. Let's see what's in here. Nothing. Rubbish. Is that um that stupid whack picture that I use for everything? Actually, it's your your people's problem. You find me uh, a nice little sprite to stick on this guy. If you would, that would be really helpful. Um Preferably with alpha, so we can uh, start doing alpha blending on some stuff as well. And what else? What else? What else? What else? We're not going to worry about backgrounds and stuff today. We'll deal with that later. That's because it's hard and more because um, I, want, I want to put some thought into how I want to do large, like <laughs> large, large levels, large terrains, tiles of things. I don't know. I want to think about that for a little bit longer. But it really helped to have a little sprite thing. So, oh yeah, we were just. I will use something from here for now. There's got to be. It's got to be something. Ages we had like this little whack texture that I was using for everything. Oh. Where are we? Fair enough. Right back to the beginning. Oops. Oh, are we not doing branches there? Oh, back when I wasn't sharing stuff. Oh no, that was because we were using a different project then, weren't we? Oh, that was, um, Fraggle or something? Yeah, I was doing some stuff there. Oh man, I'm just going to have to use something for... Huh. 
I really don't want to see that dirt ever again. <laughs> Come on, where is it? Oh, I'll just use this one as soon as it's there. Right. While you guys find something nice to look at, we'll have to make do with this. Um, so we're just going to use dirt and it's going to be, there's some load image to texture. In fact, we don't even need to qualify it, don't we? We can just do load image to texture. Uh, we take a file name. I think what we'll do is we'll have everything relative to the system for now. So what I'll do is I'll make a little helper. So let's go and um, let's do images. We'll make a new file. Images.lisp. Def bar. Um, yeah. Textures. And make hash table. And the test is going to be equal because we're going to be testing by string. Defun x or load text is going to take some path. It's going to be a rel path. Um, we're going to do the system. Where is it? UIOP. No, it's not. It's ASDF, isn't it? ASDF uh, system relative path name. It's relative to daft and it is whatever the rel path is. So let's path be that. And then text is going to be load image to texture using that. And we'll leave everything else as default. And then we'll say, oh no, not quite. Uh, we're going to do get hash rel path from textures. Or this. Set of get hash rel path textures to text. And that should just let us say load text, and I think it was called floor, wasn't it? Yeah, floor.jpg. Floor.jpg. There we go, got a texture, it's fucking massive. Um. <laughs> hey, borrow dusters, deliver the goods. Let me just check before I try and bring this up anywhere else. Perfect, that'll do, that will do. Right. So it was, um, Called Shuttle 2. I can just search it here. Shuttle! Shuttle 2. Oh, I'm probably banning all the JavaScript in the world. Actually, I do trust these guys. They'll be fine. Chug, 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 chug. Yeah! Right. Twitch TV. Hey, we're on to DTO's channel now. Um, oh, come on! Let's see if it knows me already. I can't be bothered to type in everything. Yes. Where are we? Dashboard. Here we chug. Twitch watching Twitch. And of course, I won't be able to see the thing. Um, borrow dust. Sorry, man. Could you just paste that link one more time so it comes up in this chat? <laughs> it's really dumb. Awesome. Thank you, sir. That is perfect. Shuttle 2. Save. Right. Where is he? Your downloads. Shuttle 2. Awesome. Um, copy that to Daft. I really appreciate that, by the way. <laughs> um, 
Hold on a minute, why are you... Why are you disappointed? Brodust, oh, that lag. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they, they do some serious buffering. Oh, only about five seconds? Oh, that's not bad. I thought it was about 20 seconds. Um, so anyway. We should have a shuttle. There we go. Good! That's gonna be better. And if we load it again and compare the last ones by identity, so like by pointer, essentially, we can see it's the same object. So we're not loading the same thing twice. Right, now, where's our fragment shader? Down here. Dun, 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 dun. It's going to take a uniform, um, which is the sampler. It's going to call it Sam, because I like calling it Sam. Sampler 2D, compile that. Uh, we're going to need some UVs though, so let's do that. We're going to take UV, which is the vector 2. Once we compile this, we're going to need to go up here. We need to say that we're going to return two values now, which includes the uh, text chords of GPMT, um, which is our vertex. We'll do this, and then... What? Oh, Chris, you're an idiot. That's the type, not the name of the variable. Do this. Right, so that's recompiled. And now we need to come down here and say we're going to use the one that takes a vec2. Now if we pull again, we can see that our fragment shader I will try is now taking sampler 2D and it's taking a vec2 from the previous stage. Hurrah! Um, and so now here we can just do the simple thing where we say texture. Um, we're going to sample this texture at this UV. Everything goes black because we haven't provided a sampler. That's a good point. Um, we've currently just been caching the textures in in image and not the samplers. That's actually not what I want to do. Um, let's just go into here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. So, samplers. And we will take these two guys. Bam. Bam. List. Right, those two. Oh, oh fuck, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just leak some memory, it'll be okay. I was going to rescue those, but I can't be bothered. Um, and this needs to be samplers now. And now again, we can go and load text shuttle 2D. Shuttle 2, rather. Sweet! Okay, so now that's sampled, because we can't just pass a texture to the GPU, uh, to um, a shader. We have to pass a sampler, which tells, tells the GPU how to read from that texture. And we can put all kinds of settings on the sampler, which is nice. So, daft lisp. Then we can go down here, we can finally say Sam, and we can just, for now, we'll just do get hash, um, oh dear, this is going to be ugly, uh, from <laughs> samplers. There we go, little spaceship. Okay, um, cool, so we've got a lot of things to do. The now we've actually got something drawing, what I'd like to do is start splitting this up. Um, Pawn the Pimper saying, no worries, I was goofing with sprites above in the chat. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, um, what I want to do is split this up a bit. I want to get the macro that we designed last week. I want to drop that in and we are going to basically make that... Um, we'll make the data type for our actors. Um, we'll make the array of actors that we're going to use, and we are going to... Um, well, we're actually going to have... Because before I was saying I wanted to update everything in lockstep. And what this means in, in my head is... We're going to iterate over all of the... Um, why am my brain not working? Uh, iterate over all of the actors, and any of the changes you make um, get written into a separate array. And then we swap the array. So we're double, we're just double buffering. And what it means is that like if you 
everything, every actor that's looking at another actor is going to see the values that actor had at the beginning of the frame, not the ones that are being modified as we go through the loop. And this is important because say two things hit each other and then this one updates first and it goes, am I touching something? Yes. Okay. I'm going to move to here, right? It moves back very slightly. And then this one updates and says, am I touching something? No, which is like wrong because at the beginning of the frame, they were touching. And so it wants to update based on that because it might be a bullet, for example. It might want to explode on contact. And this is going to bounce off. Maybe this is as a character that gets hit back slightly by bullets. So by doing everything in one go and doing the updates in lockstep, we just remove that complexity. And because this is a really simple engine, we can afford this. We're just throwing away some cycles but in memory. It does not matter. Um, so that's cool. We're going to do that. Um, yeah. That's probably the thing to do. Ah, before I forget, um, I haven't actually mentioned this on stream before, but I'm sure like every now and again, um, people want to know how they can contribute to various projects. Because again, especially in Keppel, there's a lot of stuff going on. It feels like a really difficult project to actually help in. Um, and yeah, it kind of is just because it's been kind of growing fairly organically for a while. One place that it would be really cool to get help, and it's not the it's not the sexiest job, but it is a valuable job. We have a library called RTG Math. All right, this and this has loads of uh, vertex, uh, load of vector and matrix um, mathematical functions. So if we just go into yeah, let's go into like and quaternions and all that kind of stuff. Go into vectors. Go into vector three. We can see we've got consing and non-consing variants of. Uh, a bunch of functions. Here's how you multiply two vectors together. Here's how you divide a vector by a scalar and all this kind of stuff. Um, and that's great, but I would like to have versions for the GPU as well uh, for everything. So if we look back in RTG Math again, you'll see a Vari folder. In there, um, there are um, uh, Vary functions, so they're not done using defungg. Uh, this is targeting the compiler itself um, for a bunch of different things. So, like uh, M4 identity, M4 the zero matrix, and all this kind of stuff. Um, if you would be interested in helping flesh this out, I would love to help you. Um, the goal really is we provide everything that's in RTG Math on the GPU as well. Many of these things are already defined. So we're just defining these kind of template functions, uh, which is to say like, hey, we've got, uh, you know, vec4 plus a scalar is just plus in GLSL. So we just do this. Um, but there are also some ones that don't have normal support in um, GLSL. For example, all the quaternion functions, for example. And it would just be great to have them there. It would, be, it would make, um, it would make Keppel and every, it would make every project that relies on RTG math more, um, just more fluent to use, more um, more consistent rather. Like you can use all of these functions, CPU, GPU, you don't have to think about it so much and it's just, you know, lower, lower mental overhead. And that's really cool. Um, so yes, if you're interested in helping with any of the stuff, give me a yell, um, all the normal places, email, Reddit, whatever, YouTube. Okay, um, what was I to bring about? Back here, I need some coffee and also some of this not coffee. Now I know there's there obviously a, a bunch of the regular gang who is always lovely to have. Um, have seen a lot of this stuff before that I'm doing. Um, but if they or any of the uh, newer folks who are along want to uh, ask any questions about what they've been seeing on here, especially to do with the GPU stuff, feel free. I, I like we've got weeks to do all this stuff. I'm, I'm not putting any pressure on it. Um, so yeah, yell them out. Burrowdust is also saying you can also port RTG math onto SC2. You could, you could. I, I'd say I, I've been looking at some of the SSC stuff. It's kind of interesting though because um, 
Some of the things map very well, of course, like, oh, we're adding two vectors together, we can use SSE add, and that's all great and stuff. And, but as soon as you hit stuff like dot products and all that kind of thing, the wins go down a lot, unless you're doing things like multiple dot products in parallel. Um, it's just one of those things that, like, the making a vector class isn't actually the best abstraction for a lot of things. Um, it would be better to have the vectors and kind of a... Uh, structure of arrays format and then do all of the yeah so like I say do the do this do four dot products at once for example or if you're using AVX how many you can do there um, yeah it's cool so I'm not really sure I, I'm still kind of like hesitant about adding I mean I will add some SSE stuff to RTG math but it's I'm not expecting massive wins all over the place and i'm thinking about other ways of crunching large amounts of data in lisp again with sse oh the simd stuff is so exciting it's got my brain got my brain ticking away recently anyway ah oh, almost lukewarm coffee slightly less than lukewarm Okay, what are we going to do? Okay, let's bring up the notes from last time. So in Play With Verts, we had a proto... Was it there? Oh, of course, I've gone on to a different branch now. Oh. Play With Verts. Uh, what was the last episode? Episode... REPL? <laughs> My god. Episode 27, probably. There's the protocol folder and the 2D engine stuff. Hooray. And this was just the notes we made regarding what we wanted the API to roughly look like. So for those who weren't um, who weren't here, there was a game engine that I played with when I was a kid called Div Game Studio or something like this. And every entity in the game was written as a like a separate process. It had its own main loop, and then everything ran concurrently. And it was just it was surprisingly nice, even as a beginner. Like I had a very little real pro like game making experience, obviously, and I was just concurrency is meant to be hard, but it felt so natural when writing things that way. And that was sweet. Uh, thanks for the link, the uh, link Pom to Pimp. That's Div Arena. Nice. Um, uh, names borrow dust is saying did you look into sb hyphen cga yes i did um i have seen their sse stuff it is cool um again look at their uh, look at their dot product implementation the there's a lot of shuffling going on to get those last ads of course the 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 squaring each of the components is done in completely in parallel you just you know multiply the two same uh, SIMD registers together. But then you've got to do a co like coalescing add, which just isn't really playing to the strength of the... It is fast. It's just... Uh, it's not as fast as it could be, you know? Like, you could do four dot products at the same time, and you would be way faster than what they're doing. Um, maybe I add a four dot products function, you know? It's just no, because then you'd need to... You would need to unpack that data into the right format. But, you know, it is, like all the basic stuff is really fast, right? It's kind of a no-brainer for um, for all the vector additions, multiplies, divides, all the kind of stuff there are SIMD operators straight away for. Like, yeah, it's great. And I would love to see some of the um, some of the matrix functions. I bet we can make a shit ton faster doing that. But there are other ways. There are other ways, and I want to look into them. So I'm I haven't dived into that yet. But as I'm like, I haven't done any assembly stuff before, so this is kind of me dipping my, dipping my toes in many waters or some terrible botched expression. Um, yeah. So I might do some of that just as practice, and then do something a bit faster later on. I'm I'm just oh, I love fucking love SBCL though. It's the coolest compiler. Ah, oh, it just gives you so like oh yeah, of course you can define new intrinsics on the fly at runtime. So good! Right. <laughs> I'm so distracted. Nerdcasm! Right, so what are we going to do? Okay, so let's... Um... Right, we all... 
when we were doing this design, we started coming up with the idea that we should have different modes so that each of these is like a different main loop and we can transition with change mode. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to do this simplified version. And then, um, yeah, then we'll add this later. This is more of a kind of state machine -y kind of stuff. Um, let's go and make actors. Jason's saying you can have a lot of fun playing with the internals, the SBCL compiler. Yeah, man. I, I, I've just started reading it properly today. Um, like, again, there's a lot of things that I just don't know. I'm a complete noob, but it's it's really enjoyable. Like, just getting in and starting to piece things together. I need to write myself a guide though, as far as like, you know, a visitor's guide to the SBCL compiler, because lots of things in there are confusing me. Right, just to make sure we don't um, compile this yet, seeing as it is not defined. We'll do this. Um, and we are going to make a couple of arrays. Current. Actors. Current actors date. Make array uh, dimensions are going to be zero to begin with. Element type is going to be an actor. Let's define a class, def class actor. Don't know what to do with it yet, but we'll just define it. And we will have no initial elements. It is going to be an adjustable array. It's going to have a fill pointer currently set to zero. It's going to have um, nothing else, I don't think. I think that's all we need. Um, variable actor is unbound. Thank you. Yes. Because it's a name. Um, and then we'll just say it's next actor state. And it's the same array. Add new actor. When we do this, don't exactly know what this is going to look like. I do know we're going to create an actor, and we're going to we're going to create two actor objects. Um, and yeah, put one in each array, and then we can just swap the arrays i think that's i think that's how i want to do it and when you do set on one it's actually going to set into the second that's that's roughly what i'm going for we'll see them hey borrow dust is off all right need to do some chores have fun see you later dude take care um yeah we'll leave our new actor for now we'll, we'll work it out soon um oh yeah so last week we did noodle around a bit with actually with this macro, we did this. Um, local vars, da, 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 da. we defined a class for the actor. Actually, this looks like it could be kind of useful. I think I'm going to take this work that we did last week and paste it in and we'll start messing with it and see what we get. So if I just compile that, it doesn't freak out. So let's go and macro expand this and see what we get. Okay, so we would have a bullet, which is a subclass of actor. Um, its initial speed, it would have a speed with an init arg of speed, that's fine. Um, Updates. It takes a delta time, which we're not using yet, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to define the update method. Def generic update. Actor. 
Um, and then it's just getting access to the data. Can we specify what happens when you set f a symbol macro? Not sure if you can provide a different expansion for that. I doubt it. Oh well, we'll see. We might have to change this. And then it's just the code that was already there. And so if we tried to compile this, a lot of things would freak out. Whoa, attempt to add the standard method. Bullet to the... Um, Generic function update. Actually, I thought that actually. Loads of things wrong here. Mainly just loads of stuff missing, which we also defined in stubs for last week. So. All these stubs. Well, some of them aren't stubs yet. Um, Spawn, die, all of this. We are missing the variable self. Where is that defined? Okay. Uh, declare, ignore. Act the kind name, pos and args, and just return nil for now. Oops, args. Oh yeah, this move forward thing is actually actually somewhat defined. Let's not do that. Just remove it. Oh, what am I doing? Come on now. Declare. Ignore. Distance. L. Okay. So now all of these should be just compiling but useless. That's fine. That means this now compiles, which is good. It's actually just helpful to, um, even though this does nothing, to, to get it to compile, to put in the stubs and just make some progress with the actual kind of design of it. And then, yeah, then we'll flesh it out some more. Um, so, what kind of things are the actor gonna need? Again, last week we had a few things in there already. Um, but we should just do this from scratch. So there's going to be a position, which its init form is going to be. And then vec 3s even though it's in 2D, we have Z as depth. So there's that. Init arg is going to be position. Is there anything else we need to specify there? Probably not. We could specify a reader function, actually. Um, Yeah, how we handle the actual um, reading and writing to this is going to be interesting, so I won't do that yet. Uh, the angle or rotation this time is not going to be um, multidimensional. It's just going to be a float in radians or degrees. Degrees. We'll do it in degrees. Um, we'll convert it to radians for later. Okay. So if we went to make instance bullet, we'll see down in the mini buffer it can take a speed, a rotation, um, and a position. That's good. That's what we want. So. Oh, 
let's make another file for test stuff. And let's move this guy over here. Oops. Also gonna have a ship, which is gonna have shuttle2.png. Um, take that stuff out. Yeah. And there's nothing in its main loop. It's just gonna sit there. Actually, no, what we could do is we could do exactly what we're doing in the other file. We'll try and get this logic we've got here working with the actors. It's all kind of a bit messy at the moment. I'm not sure where where and how I want everything to work. Um, what I should do is actually push this, all the code that we've got so far. Um, but to do that, We should do this. What else have we got? Untracked files. Dun, dun, dun. We have an actors.list. We've got an images.list, of course. So let's do um, file images. Um, we're not going to build test by default. Just throw all this in. Actually, Some stuff. Amazing commit messages right now there, Chris. Good work. Okay. What have we got over here? Currently our update is just um, we're setting the position to be the sign of now. So what I really want to do is be able to say set f x is sign of now. Um, and then when this runs, it should, uh, yeah, this is how we want to render things. Hmm. So in our main loop, we want to iterate over the actors and do stuff with them. So I suppose for now, we don't have to immediately get the two arrays update and lockstep thing working. Uh, we can start with just one array and then go from there. So what we will do is we'll say update actors and we're going to go to the actors file um, update actors it's going to take nothing and right now it does nothing but it compiles and we will take this code Update and draw be the same? Yeah, it can be for now. Oops. Why not? Don't know what the resolution is though. Okay, so that's still working. So we've got this loop down a bit smaller. Um, we're not using res for anything else here, so let's just move this code down. Ultimately, we're not gonna reset the viewport size every single frame, but it's not hurting us for now. One thing that's slightly odd is I would have thought that editor config should have kicked in. So if I do lots of spaces and then save, yeah, it removes the spaces now, good. Um, so that's cool, we clear, we update actors and we swap. We're going to probably do update and render together, so, well, for now at least, it does not matter. What's going on over here? Not much. Lovely, quiet people. Um, so, we assume that we are going to go through, we're going to go to loop for, and we will do this in a smarter way later, rather than a draw call for every actor, but for now it'll do. Um, for actor across, because it is an array, uh, current actor state do, and then we're gonna draw. And then for this, 
this is now going to be um, slightly different. We're going to do update actor, which is going to call the update method in define actor here. You see an update, it takes a ship, runs this code. Um, and then we are going to throw this into another function just to move the clutter slightly. not sure what the types of things are so it's complaining but other than that yeah we're not using actor itself yet cool but that works that's gone though <laughs> worrying and the reason is that current actor state has nothing in it so add new actor we're gonna bodge into life by just saying um push um what are we gonna do no it's slightly different. Uh, pushes for lists. We want to make an actor. Oh yeah, let's just do... Wait a second, we have... The add new actor is just spawn. We've done this before. Let's go look down at spawn. Um, Malting. And we had code for this last time as well. Let's go look at what we had, just for hints. So we fudged the name, we made an instance of it, and threw the args into that, which is fine. Uh, we made up a position, and we pushed it onto a list of things. In fact, this code is almost what we need. Um, we want to, again, fudge up a name. Um, in the current package, we want to um, make an instance of that uh, class passing in the arguments that came in here. Um, anyone wants to set the position? I mean, I don't think we really need to do that just yet, unless x of pos, oh no, we, we, when we spawn, we put in a position. Oh, okay, yes, because everything's relative to self. Um, yeah, that's an interesting one. This is one of the problems we had last week, is because things are relative to the thing that spawns it, us calling spawn didn't make any sense. Um, I know what I'm going to do. Spawn... Do this, we will absolute pass and instead of pushing onto the list, we've got a vector push. I can't remember what it's called. Vector push. Vector push extend, that's it. Um, we're pushing the actor that we've just created onto um, the current actor state array. Soon we'll be creating two and pushing one to both, and then we can do copying, but for now this will be fine. Um, let's have a look. What next? Let's try and compile this and see what happens. One warning! Doesn't know what pos is. Um, ah, yes. Actually, this should have been pos and parent pos. Okay, now we've got spawn. What does it look like here? Uh, 
Okay, we're going to call spawn with an actor kind name with a um, parent position, which is this. Uh, the position that was passed in and the args. And that's good. So that is the function that is going to be used uh, by normal people in the API. We will add a little helper for ourselves called spawn. Same signature as this. Almost the same as this too. Instead of self, we're just going to pass in 0, 0, 0, and that lets us position the thing absolutely when we spawn it. Cool. So if we didn't completely screw that up, we might be able to spawn an actor. Let's see how we broke it. Spawn. Uh, actor kind name is ship. Valid number of arguments, one. Correct, it is invalid, because I meant to have also passed in a position. It should be a, let's make sure that it was required to be a vector two. Yes, that is what was expected, good. Okay, there is no standard function. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, position when called with arguments. Ugh. Oh, it's set of position. So we're trying to set this pos ship's position to this. Why is not working? Um, Well, let's have a look at the ship object. It has a position and a rotation, but it does not have, um, if I remember correctly, let's just go and see, macro expand this. It's not gonna have a reader or writer functions, accessor functions essentially, for um, the position. Ah, damn you all because that belongs to actor and actor hasn't specified them not sure what one what I would like to do with that yet I think for now we'll just uh, add them oh come on accessor is position accessor is rotation and um, then we have a ship cool okay so we now have um, a current actor state with one ship in it. When um, update actors is called, we loop through <laughs> this massive vector and update um, the actor and then draw it. Um, this is calling this, which is the main loop for the ship. Um, and we know that's working because we've got the sign motion going on there. And my mouse is being slightly weird. Yep, there we go. That's behaving a bit better. Um, where are we now? 2018. Blammy, that took us a while. But it's okay, we've got something started. Um, we should also be able to um, spawn more ships, but they are going to be a little bit boring because they're all going to be in the same position. So what I want to do is I want in our ship um, we can specify start time. Uh, to have been get eternal real time now. Seeing as we've just made up this API, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Yeah, that should work. So let's do that. And now all of our ships, this is what I love with Common Lisp, this ship that we were looking at a second ago now has a start time, which is brilliant. So now we can add that plus start time and it's using that, which means if we add spawn another ship and we'll spawn it actually at three. Oh, where'd it go? There's two ships. They've got to have different times. Start time five nine, start time five nine three, blah blah blah. It's 
different number though. And it's, you know, signed, so it should have made some difference. Hmm. It is slightly strange. So. Another thing I want to check. The position of this is minus two, three, and that's one, four. Oh. Ah, one second. This position is rather strange. Um, no, actually, ah, yeah, it's positioned, it's positioned at three in the Z. Okay, let's uh, let's change this value. Um, uh, so we'll do zero, and then yeah, why is a second zero zero zero? Hmm. I am a little bit confused. Am I being really daft though? Maybe I'm doing clear between every fucking one. Um, where is... No. Draw rector. Doing something very simple and very stupid here. And I'm not sure what it is. Um, Let's remove this update for a second. So, oh, wait, why didn't that have an effect? That guy's still moving. Okay, something weird's happening here. So if the ship isn't... still oh no don't say we're still drawing the old crap in on the first thing we're not though super weird if we comment out this we get no graphics turn it back on we've got that go to actors oh so stupid Fuck, why is that so janky? That's completely insane. Nice and smooth, horribly janky. Super weird. business. You get the feeling that there is some ink clamping going on here. is so strange. I'm doing something very stupid here and I just haven't worked out what it is yet. 
Ugh. I mean, the start time can't be updating. That's, that doesn't make any sense. Which means we should definitely check it, because that's probably what's happening. We've not got some disgustingly inefficient... Nah, I can't read it. Plus, starting time. You seeing that? You seeing that weird bullshit that I'm seeing? No man, I don't, I don't like that at all. What was that shit? Hmm. Suggestions may be sent in on a postcard of to what the fuck that was. Um, my brain's not working enough to tell me what it is now. So that's that. So where's uh, where's our test objects? Instead of getting to turn on real time, we'll just do now. Um, and then we should be able to spawn another one at minus three. And uh, yeah. Again, not sure why that's at that position. Unless I've. I know why that is. Yes, it's this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, right. So we have a bug in the thing we use to make this. Where's our uh, where's our spawn code? Spawn. Here we go. This is the bit I've got wrong, and we're keeping that at zero for now. Okay, fine. So we've got a few spaceships. Uh, currently, they're autonomous. Um, we can change what they do. Um, and then we're gonna have them spawn bullets whenever we click something. So we will do that in a minute. Uh, Pom de Vince says no clue here. Hey, Johnny, how you doing, man? Um, so I wanna do the bullets next. Um, I mean, we should be able to spawn them. <laughs> we need to implement the move forward function. Um, and that'll be fine. Um, I'm just still weirded out by that last bug. It's very strange. I'm not sure if I'm doing just something, something fucky there. It feels like it's something to do with either sign or large numbers or just the fact that we're ints and some of the um, type coercions there. Not sure. But, we have something moving, so let's save this quickly. Currently as well, we've hard-coded what, um, what image we're using, so we should actually take that from the visual parameter um, when we do spawn. Um, I wonder where... Where does that end up? 
Actually, I don't think we use it at all right now. So we should um, probably modify our macro to actually make use of that. There's too many things we're just kind of throwing away at the moment. So basically, we all of the ones with keywords are, are properties that belong to the system. And the ones without them, just regular variables, they're going to become local to this process, uh, local to the actor. Um, but we remove all the keyword ones for now and just ignore them, which is what was fine, but it would be quite nice to use those. Um, so how should we do that? It would be kind of nice to give the actor their visual, which is going to be an which is going to have no init form, it's going to have an init arg, um, which is going to be visual, but spelt correctly. Accessor, we're not going to use right now. So now all of those uh, spaceships now have a visual slot on their class. Um, in define actor, we're going to have to get the keyword vars which is just going to be the opposite of this. Um, ah, just be lazy. Remove, if not, um, keywords. So that's going to get these. And then we can just shove them through a destructuring bind, I think. Um, yeah, let's just do visual for now. Put visual in the destructuring bind. We'll take the how will we do this? I think we're going to have to. I think what we're going to get from uh, from this is a list of pairs like these guys. So we want to concatenate those all together. Um, we can just use reduce append for that thing. Choose, append, keyword, or the keyword files. And let's see what that happens. Oh, that's interesting. Visual is defined but never used. Yes, that does make sense. But let's just make sure that when I do this, it freaks out. Right. Too many uh, error while passing arguments to, to the structuring bind. Too many elements in this. Yes. So for right now, we're just going to allow you to specify. Oh no, let's, let's specify sprite size, seeing as that seems to be one of the ones I want to use. But we will declare that we're going to ignore sprite size because we don't need it just yet. Now if we do this, um, again it's complaining that... Too many elements in this list to satisfy the... Oh, of course! Oh, I'm such an idiot. These are meant to be and keys. These are keyword arguments. Let's try that again. Okay, now that is at least being passed. Down on def class, um, we are going to want to just refactor a couple of things here. Add the visual slot. Add the visual to um, to our actor. Is that the way we want to do it, actually? Uh, yes, I think we do. So we'll just say init form. This will be run when the thing is instantiated. And it will be, let's see what the function is called, load text. Which is really load sampler, like load texture and give me the sampler, but that's fine. And that should be the visual. Let's just compile this and see what we get. If we expand define actor now, we can see that there is a visual um, in our bullet class. It has an init form, which is going to load the bullet texture. Great. And down in define ship, again, we get another one that's going to load shuttle too. So when we do this, We'll probably find that those, I mean, while the ships have the slots, they're not going to be initialized, I don't think. So let's look at current actor state ship. And the visual property in each of those is unbound. Um, so that's going to freak out if we start to use them. So 
Uh, let's loop over these quickly and fix them up. For a in uh, current actor state, do set a slot value of a, and it's going to be the visual to be. Was it get text? No, it was load text, wasn't it? Load text. And right now we're just using this. It's not a list. That's true, it's not a list because I used in instead of across. Okay. Now if I go and look at these ships again, we should see that they all have a sampler in the visual slot. And so we can go and update the draw actor routine to instead of just getting this sampler from the hash table, we can use the correct um, sampler from the actor itself. So we're going to get from the actor, we're going to get the visual. And that is fine. Nothing changed because uh, they're all currently using the, the same one. Um, if we use, did I already delete that other file? I think I did, yeah. If we had another sprite to put in there, we can. Um... Oh, so one second. Jace is saying um... actually both mod and start time before. Actually, mod both now and start time before adding. My guess is that either they've got too much precision to present. Oh, yeah, they've got too much precision to represent as a single floating point. Yeah, that's. Uh... Oh, yeah, of course. If it's too large, they're going to. Yeah, they're just going to slam out and we're going to get very low precision. That's it. Good job, sir. So really we should do... Um, so add start timer now together and then... And we'll do that. And we will mod by, you know... 2 pi f as a single float. That'd be fine. Anyway. Oops. Cool. Little things, little things, but we're making some progress. What do we just do? Act in the visual factors. We did have that other, um, it would, see, actually, this is a bit shitty, because we've got, this is all meant to be live recompile, um, but when we change this, nothing happens. This should go and update all of these. That, that's, that's no good. So, how are we going to do that? We need to latch on to when a, um, when this is recompiled we want to go and check we want to just go and reapply the visual basically yeah let's do that we can we can hack it in pretty easy um so this is the macro that defines the actor um we're going to say updates all existing um Actors, and for now we're just going to throw the visual in there. That's all we're going to do. Um, oh yeah, we're going to need to know of type. So the, t uh, the visual is going to be a string, yes. So we can probably leave it like that. But this one, we're going to need the name of the type. I think that's it. This will make sense in a minute. Right, so defun. By the way, is this, uh, is everything, um... oh, sorry, dude. You're saying mod them separately before adding? Oh, gotcha. Um... Oh, 
Oh yeah, now it's trying to update everything. So we'll compile this. Do nil for now. Say continue. Right, so after compiling now, if we go and look at the emitted code, um, update all existing actors of type ship with this visual. It's a good good enough fudge for now. So um, type name and visual. So what we'll do is we'll just do exactly what we had a second ago. Loop through this. Um, when type of actor is type name, um, set the slot to be the load text of visual. Um, and now we need a different sprite. <laughs> Let's take this guy. See, this is the partner to the other one. Downloads, shuttle, copy to Doft. Oh, memory fault. Damn. Now, I wonder why that is. Okay, the reason that is happening is that compilation is happening on a different thread than our execution is. And we're trying to allocate a texture. That thread doesn't have a GL context, so it's getting freaked out. So, um, what we will do is something nice and hacky and simple. Uh, def bar. Pass for next frame. Nil. We're going to call all of those tasks. <laughs> so now if you push a function to there, it will get run at the start of the next step. Next frame in our case. So what we should be able to do, oh, this is so hacky, is say push this as a lambda to tasks for next frame. <laughs> oh wait, why didn't shuttle two work? No! What the hell? Shuttle two does look different from shuttle. So we did shuttle. What happened? Strange. Print the visual and let's go to the REPL and see what we get. Oh, oh fuck. Oh yeah, of course. I'm such an idiot. Uh, back, <laughs> back in here. Once we've gone and, yeah, once we've gone through this list, we need to set the uh, tasks for next frame to be nil. Um, and because map of nil is going to, map into nil returns nil, we can use that. So now we've got um, reloading of the visuals going. That's cool. Sweet. That's pushed. Cool. Okay, so um, we can't really. Oh, we've got 15 minutes left. Maybe we can finish without implementing this. We will see. Um, there's a couple of things at the moment the size of our ships are just um, one every basically every um, sprite is the same size we've got a unit cube sitting here and this height here is like 9 by 9 or 10 by 10 or something like this so that's no good we wanted the size of this to be based on the size of the sprite 
which um, let's uh, load text shuttle two was 52 by 52. And currently this is one by one. So we're going to change it to respect this. And then we're going to have to zoom out a long way because everything's going to look ridiculous. So how do we do that? Um, actors. By the way, folks, yell out if um, I'm not seeming coherent or I miss, you're missing something or anything like that because I'm, I don't know, strange mood this evening and I'm not sure if, basically, is this good TV? I don't know. Um, so yeah, yell out if you need anything, please. Otherwise, I'll just kind of keep mumbling to myself and carrying on. So what do we need to do? We need to size things based on the size of our uh, visual. And the simplest way we can do that, I suppose, if we take... Let's just go get one of our actors. So um, I know what's going on. Let's take this guy as a test. Let's make a little temp var for him. And we want to get the size. And we're not going to do it in a very fast way, but we'll do it in a way that kind of works. So we'll get the slot value, which is the visual of this. We will get the... Um, The sampler probably doesn't have a resolution, but we can get the sampler texture um, and we can get the what? Yeah, we can get the resolution from that. Perfect. That'll do. In a pinch, that'll do. So what we'll do is we now need to upload the size. So let's dump this here for a second because we're going to need it in a minute. Uh, actually, let's just let's calculate the size. So we say, let's size is this. All right. It's complaining that we're not using that size at the moment. That's fine. We'll go up to the We'll go to the GPU function where it's actually used. Thanks, love, life, semtex. Perfect. <laughs> oh, damn, you too. That's grand. Um, where am I going? I've forgotten what I'm doing. What are we doing? Sizes. Yes, that's it. Uh, where are we doing the drawing, though? Is that still in, uh, still in, probably in the first file, isn't it? Darth.lisp. Okay. Yeah, here we are. Here's our vertex shader. So let's add another uniform, which is the size, which is going to be a vec2. Um, now we should be able to go down, go down here to draw actor and pass in the size, which was just in that size variable. Done. So that is now up here on the GPU. Um, and then we're just going to multiply this guy by size. Um, They're enormous, which is great. Um, so currently, like I think the height of our entire screen was uh, was 10. These are guys are 52 by 52 high. So if we change it to 100 now, um, we can see that they fit. You'll also notice that like you can just about see the others underneath um, because I think we positioned them at something like three <laughs> minus three and stuff like that. Let's set the screen height to be um, 600. Now this is back to a reasonable size again, which is cool. Um, and we just need to go and reposition the ships because they got crap positions. And we'll just do that from the inspector, to be honest, because it's going to be easier than farting around with anything else. So let's go into ship one. Let's set its position to be If they're 52, then we'll do minus 100. Um, we'll go into this one. We'll leave it at zero. We'll take this one and make its position be positive 100. Cool. Now we've got those guys all set up. Um, their movement is obviously tiny because, um, again, we, it's shifting by one pixel backwards and forwards, or one game unit rather backwards and forwards. 
So let's go to our test file and we'll find our ship and then we're just going to go and multiply this value by. Come on. 200. Cool. So again, all our aspect ratio ship was still working and all that kind of stuff. Now we're working in like whatever the size of your assets are, that's how everything is going to be sized. And you can just say the number of pixels or game units high the screen is and then everything else is uh fine um <laughs> i'm pointing at the screen again fuck yeah it's over there it's over there check it out it's good stuff i especially love the fact my hands it's not even like you can infer where my finger is because i point like this so the hand is fully off screen oh such quality uh, we need a multi-camera production. <laughs> yeah. Pretty. But then I'm just going to fuck up the switching around between cameras, so let's not. Mmm, cold coffee. Right. Now we got a few minutes left. Finger cam. Oh, finger cam. That would be weird as hell. <laughs> You're going to get so seasick while I'm typing. I love Twitch. Everything's... <laughs> Did you see the uh, dude with the GoPro on the trombone? That was fantastic. So nice. Right, what am I doing? Uh, not like this. Okay, so... Um, I, I really want the bullet stuff to work. I'm going to comment out this because... Uh, actually, no, if it compiles... Th these are all dummy things anyway, so it's not going to be used yet. Um... Why would that be set from the mouse X? No, we just want to move forward by one each time. Uh, another thing we'll do next, I mean, now we'll talk about what we're going to do next week soon. Just make the thing, Chris, make the thing. Right, so move forward, I mean. Um, yes. We've got an angle, haven't we, for each of our things, so we can just Um, so V3 plus um, the position of the of self by And we're going to take the angle from degrees to radians. I can never remember if this is the right way around or not. Doesn't matter. Um, and this is also going to be multiplied by a scalar. That scalar is the distance. Everything's wrong! Oh yeah, because I've got to wrap that around there. And then this is reading ignored variable. Yep, we don't want to ignore it anymore. And that's it. Maybe? I suppose we'll find out. Um, one thing we're not doing in, in any way is um, accounting for frame rate. But it'll be fixed to 60 frames a second, I think, uh, by default. So unless I uncap that. Ah, you know, we'll deal that another day. We're going to do... We'll actually probably do a whole episode, or at least half an episode, on um, fixed time step stuff. Because I want to go through and get that right. And we'll go through the article and, you know, the classic fix your time step one. It's a good one. Um, for now, since we don't have a bullet texture on hand, I'm going to use uh, the first shuttle as the, the bullet. Uh, we don't have a sprite size, so we're not going to worry about that for now. Um, so it's going to be full size, whatever, whatever the size. I suppose it will be the same size as this ship. Um, we're not going to worry about axis in range, it's just forward. What happens if... Let's just say, let's bring up the REPL. Um, 
time is this. Let's say when I had some nice temporal lambdas which are probably good for this, but I won't dig them out just now. Um, Can't be, can't be chopped down. Oh no, it'll be floor, won't it? Idiot. Okay. Hi, 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 hi. Ah, oh, yeah, that's going to shoot a load of bullets for the duration of that second. Oh, let's just do another counter then. Who cares? Um. So every four seconds we should get some bullets. That's too often. That's that's too infrequently rather. Let's do it every second. Cool. So they should all shoot bullets at the same time. Let's get rid of that print because it's annoying. And instead, we'll say spawn bullets uh, and we'll place it at zero, zero, which will be centered on the bang. Oh, when attempting to read the slot's value, uh, angle is missing from the object bullet. Really? What do they call it then? Oh yeah, it's just rotation, it's not angle. Not a smart kid. Right, okay. Um... Let's make sure that it's definitely a float. <laughs> Oh, that's good. They're making bullets, but they're not moving anywhere because move forward one is far too damn slow. And it doesn't seem to work anyway. What? Right, okay, so let's... Uh... That's interesting. Again, not the smartest kid. Right, set of position to be... And they're off. Cool. Now we're talking. Right. Sweet. Okay. Two minutes to ten. That's enough. So, this is at least the first sketch of what I was wanting to do, which was the fact that when you're doing things, you're doing it relative to yourself. What we're going to do over probably, I think next week we'll... Um, I'm not sure what we'll do next week. I'll come up with something. There's, there's obviously plenty to do. Um, but the first bit was obviously that we... When we spawn something, we do it relative to ourselves. Everything is going to be relative to ourselves. So when this guy gets the position of this guy, um, he's going to get a vector from him to that. Um, and we're going to write loads of functions which are done that way. And yeah, then basically at the moment, both of these have their own independent loops, technically. Um, one thing that we didn't do is do the um, lockstep updates. So at the moment, it's going through mutating the objects in this array and not using this array at all. What we want to do is read from this one and write into this one and then swap. And we will do that. Yeah, that's what we'll start with next week, I think. But seeing as we have... Um, that going that is that um in the last 
seconds. If you have any questions, comments, yells, this, that, and the other, yell them out now. And um, yeah, that's it. Yell them out now. Otherwise, it's time for me to get offline. Bone Pim has linked something. I'm guessing that's the trombone. Trombone Bell Scarecrow. <laughs> Fucking awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you guys. Let's uh let's keep cracking on this next week. We'll um actually yeah, so next week we will You'll you'll probably have to remind me because I'll have forgotten. We will get the uh lockstep updates working and we will get um basic collision detection. We'll just do radius comparisons so we can start uh, implementing things like actors in range and whether they're touching and then we'll add dying so then we'll be able to make a ship that shoots a, shoots a bullet and hits an alien and blows the alien up and then we'll have the alien shoot bullets back at us and that is the game <laughs> we'll, we'll start there right thanks a lot folks good to see you all really always really nice for you all to turn up it's awesome catch you next week <laughs>